Ransomware can't encrypt your data if you encrypt it first. Or can it? That's what we're going to try to figure out today as we take a look at NordLocker. A brand new encryption tool, this is coming out from the same company that's behind NordVPN. They have a free version and a paid version. This is quite interesting. It's an area that a lot of companies are looking at right now with everyone concerned about data privacy. And also because of the legal requirements. So for example, if you store medical records and stuff like that, you need to ensure that those are kept private. Now in terms of encryption, it's actually quite sophisticated. So they use elliptic curve cryptography, but the security of your data is ultimately going to depend a lot on how you manage it and how it is implemented as an application. And that's what we'll be looking at today. There are a couple of things that I would like to start with. So if we go and take a look at plans, you can see that it's absolutely free to use up to two gigabytes and after that you have to pay one dollar per month now this is a ridiculously low price but you need to understand that the data is not getting stored on their servers it's staying on your system so it doesn't add any redundancy it's just adding security with the encryption now it does integrate with any other online tools that you use like onedrive but you still need to store the data somewhere and if you lose that you lose your data now let's take a look at the actual application. Now if we go ahead and try to open NordLocker, as you will see, we need to sign in. So I'm going to sign in with my account. And now it's asking me for the master password. This is kind of like a password manager. So your master password is what you use to manage all of your lockers across devices. Once we're in the application, we can create a new locker. So you can select a specific folder or choose files manually or create a new locker and then put files into it or you can encrypt files on your OneDrive. Now I've already created a locker so I will click on open existing and I believe it's in C users Leo documents. So we've got our super important data over here and now we're gonna try a couple of things to see how this application actually works with regards to access of data. Because I don't really doubt the security of the encryption. I'm sure they've put a lot of effort into it. And as you can see from the files, these are not something that you can easily read. But because this is all managed via this application, the question is going to be, is this application robust enough that if let's say there's a backdoor or there's some kind of remote access tool on this computer, would it be able to somehow access the data through memory and in that way violate your privacy? So that's what we're going to test today. We're going to do it with some classic ransomware. And I've had the chance to experiment a bit with this application, so I kind of know what to expect. So to make this interesting, we'll do it two ways. So first, I'm going to log out, which means I should lose access to these files. There we go. And now we'll execute Jigsaw, and we will see if we can still recover our files afterwards. Now, I'm fully aware that this is not access control, but I'm just curious to see to what extent the ransomware is able to access files in the locker. Because I have a feeling that the ransomware is not going to be interested in encrypting this mess. Congratulations, your software has been registered. As you can see, Jigsaw is an official ransomware. Needs registration first. <laughs> And within minutes, I expect our documents will be encrypted along with our pictures and we will see a ransom note. As you can see, that's already happening. We've got the dot font extension, same for our documents. And there's the ransom message. Since we've all seen this before, if you haven't, check out the Jigsaw ransomware video, wink, wink. But now I'm gonna try and open NordLocker and see if I can access my data. Let's go for the same locker. And we've got a crash. Now this could just be because the ransomware is terminating process, doing stuff in the background. So I'm just gonna restore the system from snapshot and we will try to migrate the same data and we'll see if we can open that post this disaster. So I'm gonna to go to the same folder We'll just copy this over to our shared folder. And now we're going to restore snapshot and we'll try to open the locker directly from here. So this will tell us if our data was affected by Jigsaw. We're back on a ransomware free system and now I'm going to log in again. 
And now obviously we want to open an existing locker. So I'm going to try and find that in my shared folders. Again, just to clarify, we're not opening the locker from this system. We're opening the locker that we saved from the Jigsaw encrypted system. Let's see if we can still access our data or if it's been affected in any way, and it hasn't, at least not this file. Let's try this one. And as you can see, if you can read this, your data is safe. So this is an interesting benefit of using a tool like NordLocker, even though it's not really anti-ransomware, it can protect your documents if such an unfortunate thing were to happen. Now I'm going to do another test. So what I'm going to do this time is we will go ahead and open the locker on this system. So that is again in C, user, Leo, documents.locker. And now I'm going to run the same ransomware, but we're going to have NordLocker open, which means we have access to our documents. And then we'll see if they actually get encrypted by the ransomware. Waiting for Jigsaw to do its thing. Let's look at our other files. Oh, wait, we don't have to, because guess what? Looks like our files here were encrypted too. So this is really interesting because it suggests that if you do have access to these files, ransomware can access it as well. But if we're locked out and they're not in a decrypted state, then the ransomware can access it. Now, this is a bit obvious, but just to confirm, I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time. So I'm going to copy over. First, I'll delete the thing we have in our shared folders. So I will delete this. And I'll go ahead and copy the locker folder again. So let's go back. and paste it in our shared folder. We'll do a similar test. So we will restore to snapshot. We will try to open the locker in the shared folder and that'll tell us if our files are still unaffected. And I don't think they are. I think they got encrypted by the ransomware because we had them in an unlocked state. So we'll go ahead and log in again and we'll click on open existing and select the folder we have in the shared folders. So we will pick this one. And as you can see, our data is still encrypted. This makes perfect sense because it suggests that when the application is active, your data is decrypted, other applications can access it and modify it like the ransomware did. But if you're locked out, as in you've not provided your master password, then other applications can't really access it or modify it or do anything, which is ideal for the NordLocker team, I would say. Maybe they should have some kind of access control integrated with Windows and other operating systems so you know what applications can actually see your data. From a user experience standpoint, I mean, if you look at the UI and the way it works, they have absolutely nailed it. It's very simple, easy to use. I love the UI. I love the colors and the theme. If I ever were to use an application like this, I would want it to be seamless so that it doesn't feel like I'm adding something. It should be just like a folder in Windows. And that is exactly what NordLocker is. They've absolutely nailed the user experience. Now, just so you know, if you have multiple lockers and things like that, you can actually just double click on them to open them directly, as you can see. So it's just like a regular folder automatically when you open it, it opens a locker. And if you want to see your encrypted data inside, I don't know, maybe you want to simulate what I look at when I run ransomware, then you click on open here and you see your encrypted stuff. It's also got a get Nord Locker thing here. So in case you share it and people don't know what this is, this helps. It also does have features for sharing. So if you want to share it, you just go into share locker and you can share via Dropbox or you can show locker in Explorer. And as we just demonstrated, you can actually copy and paste the locker. And as long as you have the password, you will be able to access it on any system. So I like the portability aspect of it. And I also like how it does protect you against ransomware. Again, don't take this the wrong way. It's not a foolproof ransomware solution or anything like that, because keep in mind, your data is still your data. So if that data gets deleted, it's gone. It's not on NordLocker servers, but as you just saw, it can be quite useful in avoiding getting your data encrypted, at least if you don't have it open at the same time the ransomware executed. And overall, I think it's a really interesting tool, especially for the pricing. 
So if you're interested, please go ahead and check it out. There is a special link in the description which you can use to get a 32% discount on the one year plan. The coupon code is TPSC or you can just go to nordlocker.net slash TPSC if you want to try it out. Now the company behind this have been investing a lot into cybersecurity recently. Of course, that was after a security incident with NordVPN. If you want to know more about that, I've made a dedicated video with another cybersecurity professional. So check that out. It's going to be in the cards or at the end of the video. But yeah, if you want to check out Nord Locker, use the link in the description. You can get an account for absolutely free, so there's no downside to trying it out. I'm very interested to see how services like this evolve and whether or not they become more of a security tool, more of a privacy tool, or just a convenience tool. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. There's a lot of interesting cybersecurity content coming your way. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.